What's going on guys? After all those top 10 lists, it's time for the official NHL 22 ratings review. Really excited to bring this to you guys. Just gonna go through and give you my thoughts on all the new player ratings and potentials for all 32 NHL teams as well as some of the top prospects too. So starting off here guys with the Anaheim Ducks. First player, Hampus Lindholm, I think is already a little bit too rated. I probably have him in 86. Fowler as well is a good defenseman. I think I'd have an 85. Look at that hair. I didn't realize he was rocking the flow now. Manson's fine. Comtois, I think, maybe is a smidgen too high. Probably have an 83, but honestly, much rather than rate a young player like Comtois who's getting better a little bit too high, opposed to an aging veteran who's getting worse. So um, I'm fine with it. Look at the rest of the players here. Getzlav, I mentioned this in my franchise, but player type playmaker for Ryan Getzlav, 6'4, 227. Look at his physical stats. This guy's a power forward. I'm definitely going to change that after. I'm not sure what they're thinking there. Trevor Zegers, if you guys are wondering, uh, probably one of the top, you know, potential Calder Trophy winners this year. 82 overall, medium elite, playmaker, nasty hands, 89 deking, 88 passing and puck control. Zegers should uh, grow a ton in franchise. Troy Terry there, Sam Steele. I think Steele's actually dropped in rating, but... 23 really hasn't, you know, proven himself to be an everyday top six player in the NHL. Drysdale, 80 medium lead, looks pretty good. Same with Jacob Larson there. Max Jones, still medium top six. He's probably like a high top nine at this point. But I know he's a gamer. He sometimes streams on Twitch, so I'll allow it. Uh, Sonny Milano there actually just cleared waivers, surprisingly. Milano as well, I didn't realize. Rock and the flow now. I feel like it's all like the pandemic flows we got going on for all these new headshots. Kessler there, of course, still an LTIR, only one year left. Um, I'll first show you guys all the skaters, and I'll do the goalies afterwards. I think it's probably the easiest way. Jacob Chikrin here, only 85. He had a big year last year, kind of a coming out party for him. Finally, you know, stayed healthy for that full season. Led defenseman in goals, 85 overall, medium elite. Um, I feel like you could make him an 86, like he was that good last year. Clayton Keller there, 84, now has low elite opposed to medium elite. It's really hard to argue that, only at 35 points. But he is playing on a pretty bad uh, Coyotes team, so maybe you could leave him at that medium elite. Uh, Shane Costaspera is medium elite. Luckily, he's 28, so it doesn't really matter, but still, I'd probably make it low elite just because I don't know why he would have medium. Uh, Ryan Dezingle there. Let's see. Alex Galchenyuk, I actually had to move myself. Uh, the rosters are like pretty up to date, but they're not fully up to date. I'd say they're missing the past week and a half or so of roster moves. Uh, Lawson Kroos there, medium top nine. I want to say he had medium top six before. Uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Of course, they got all those big, you know, Canuck contracts now. Roussel, the hair shape Beagle. Louis Erickson should be somewhere down here. Victor Soderstrom still has pretty good uh, potential. Erickson, 76. I think I mentioned last year. He's not that bad. Connor Timmons there, of course. They got back for Darcy Kemper. Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron finally have high league potential again. They're in their 30s, but it's just disrespectful, I think, having them high top six. I don't care if they're over 26. Give the elite players elite potential and the non-elite players like Gosses Bear um, non-elite potential. Pasternak there, 25-91, medium elite. I feel like I could even give Pasternak high elite, honestly. Uh, Hall's 87, tied with McAvoy. I mentioned in my top 10 defenseman. McAvoy could be higher. I'd say 89-90, uh, personally, for McAvoy. Carlo there. Uh, Grizzly, they give a bit of an upgrade to. He could probably be like an 83. Felino, Halla, Smith, of course. Uh, no David Krejci here. I wonder if he's still in the game, like on the Czech Republic international team, though, because even though he's retired, I think he might play for them. I just checked, guys. Krejci is still in the game on HC Olomuc. That's his Czech team. I forgot he signed with them, so pretty cool to see. He's actually got an X Factor, too. Buffalo Sabres here. Jack Eichel, 24 91, medium elite. Um, Eichel's another guy you could give high elite to. The rest of the Sabres teams can be pretty rough. So you got Olofsson who's not bad. Same with Dalene. Dalene's another guy I feel should still have high elite. Um, I think, you know, he still has it in him. And he was first overall pick compared to Carlson and Lidstrom. Pretty big comparables. He's only 21. I like giving, you know, top prospects a bit higher potential. It seems like all the prospects pretty much have medium elite. I'd rather, you know, mix in some of the different ones. High elite, medium franchise, even like a low franchise now and then, just to mix it up. Uh, Dylan Cousins there, their best prospect by far. Will Butcher 82, it's probably a tad high, seen as uh, it was basically a cap dump for the devil. It's probably should be like an 81 or an 80. Jeff Skinner 79. He had a rough year last year, 14 points. Uh, when was the last time he had that big season? Two seasons ago, 63 and 82. 79 might be a little harsh for Skinner, but we know they can still somehow trade away that contract, so whatever. Yoki Harju, low top four. Really, I didn't think... I feel like Yoki Harju should still have a medium top four. I think like, he's a decent prospect. Casey Millistat finally doesn't have medium leads. For the last couple years, I've changed him to low lead. They made a medium top six. Pretty much works out to be the same thing. Ocposo also finally doesn't have medium lead potential. Another thing that didn't really matter. It was just like a small annoyance. Uh, you guys can see the on power I created there. Calgary, Matthew Chuck, Johnny Goudreau, Lindholm. All these ratings look pretty good to me. Uh, Monahan, 85. 
He's kind of had a rough uh, last season. Could even make him like an 84. Tandem uh, 84, I think is a bit of an upgrade. Hannafin there, no longer medium lead, only medium top four. Honestly, it's probably accurate. You can give him a high top four though, uh, just to kind of represent his draft status and everything. Manju Pani, bit of an upgrade down 83. Medium top six, two way forward there. Good to see him finally getting some love. Anderson 83 as well, I think is a bit of an upgrade. I want to say he was an 81 last year. Dylan Dubé 81, I think is also a bit upgrade. Same with Lucic there. Valimaki, Zadarov, they all look to be pretty similar. So, um, looks pretty good. Eric Goodbrickson, 74. That's a little low. Like, he does play in the NHL. He played 47 games last year. Um, I feel like an NHL player should be at least a 78, if not like a 77. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd give him at least a 77. 74 is a little low there for Good Branson. Carolina, Aho, Sveshnikov, Slavin. Slavin should have medium elite. Again, he's 27, so it doesn't matter as much, but still. Teravainen, Trocek, Nietzsche there. Big uh, season last year for him. Stahl, Pesci, Shea, Niederreiter. Where's the guy everyone was talking about? Kokaniemi, low elite. So they finally downgrade him from medium elite. And honestly, I feel like it's fair. He's 21 now. He's played three seasons in the NHL. Uh, I mean, he's never played a full season. I guess first year he did. 79 at 34. Like, it's probably looking like he's not an elite player. He's looking more like a top six to me. So low elite, medium top six is fine. Look at that. 6.1 for one year. I actually have to check. I did it in my South franchise. I wonder what Carolina did. Did they resign him? I don't remember seeing him in free agency, so they must have, but I feel like they must have gotten him for less than 6.1. Uh, Ethan Bear there now, of course. Uh, let's see, that's pretty much it for Carolina. Chicago Blackhawks here, Kane's got franchise, Debrinkit, Jones, Jones is now an 86, I think they only dropped him by one. He had a rough season last year, probably could have made him 85, but I feel, I have faith in him, he'll probably bounce back a little bit, and with that big contract, you know, you don't want to make his value too, too low. Uh, Taze there in 86, didn't play at all last year. Kublik 84, should have a really good shot. Two way forward. Isn't Kublik more of a sniper? Maybe I'm wrong on that one. Kirby Doc there, high top six. I'd say give him medium elite. Dylan Strom, medium top six. No longer medium elite. That's accurate as well. So good to see them getting a lot of these potentials better. Um, obviously, I'm still going to nitpick some of them, but I feel like for the most part, these are a lot better. Alex Nylander, he's had medium elite for the past few years. Finally dropped down to medium top six. A lot more accurate. Now, the trade values are different this year where, you know, they aren't super high if you do have medium elite and you're a young prospect. But for the last couple of years where that was the case, guys like Alex Nylander, Casey Middlestat, who were way overvalued. You could, you could trade for so much more than they're worth in real life. Uh, Nathan McKinnon here. What the heck? I'm going to have to double check something. I'm going to hold off until I say it, but i got to check it now. Okay, so McKinnon, 26-93 high franchise. McKinnon's amazing. He is worthy of high franchise. But McDavid has medium franchise. The best player in the world. Uh, what, what? I think the only reason I can see for this is because McKinnon's 26, only has one year left to grow. They basically want to have him grow more in that final year. But McDavid is literally going to go down as a top five player all time. Maybe more. Like, I think McDavid's literally world class. So, so good. Uh, yeah, I'll be changing him to high franchise, especially after seeing McKinnon has it. Uh, Ranch in there, 2490 medium elite. Could even give Ranton a high elite. Definitely, I think Makar deserves high elite. He is the best young defenseman we've seen in so, so long. I know Adam Fox is also very, very good, but uh, someone mentioned in my comments, like, we get it, you like Makar, so I'm not going to mention it anymore. Landis Gog there, Kadri, Gerard finally getting some love, 85. Same with Devin Taser, 84. Both solid defensemen really help uh, round out that top six in Colorado. Ryan Murray, 83. Uh, maybe a touch high on him. I'd probably have him, like, an 82. When he is healthy and not injured, he's a pretty solid defenseman. Burakovsky there, 83. Same with Johnson. JT Kemford there. Rating looks pretty good. Nachushkin, finally, they actually have him as a 2A forward rather than a sniper. That's good to see. D awareness, though, is still pretty low. 82. He's one of the better you know, defensive forwards in the NHL. Um, 88 Deakin. Drop that to like 84 and give him, you know, 85 defense awareness. Probably the same rating. But good to see they got that player type right. A lot of the things I kind of mentioned in videos last year, they have changed. So maybe someone was uh, taking a watch. Tyson Joss there, 2380, medium top six. Bowen Byram now has 79 there with medium elite. Alex Newhook also now has medium elite. That's big. I think last year he had medium top six, I want to say. Uh, he's also 79 overall. So there are two first round picks in 2019, four and 16. On the cusp of 80, only 20 medium elite. Colorado is going to be a dynasty in franchise. And like their top core there is all in their 20s still. Darcy Kemper I don't think is too old. I'm going to do a quick goalie check here. Uh, he's 31. Okay, so still not too, too old. Yeah, Colorado is going to be so, so sick. Columbus here. Uh, Runsky, 2047, high elite potential. High elite for Runsky is an interesting choice. I like Runsky, but I don't think he's better than McAvoy, McCarr, Adam Fox. Those guys all have medium elite. 
Bjorkstrand there, 85. Same with Voracek. Line A, medium elite. Nyquist probably could be like 83, 82 now. Roslovich also had a kind of a coming out party last season. When he finally got traded, got some more ice time with Columbus. Then he was getting in Winnipeg. Uh, Boquist there, 21, 82, medium elite. I think that trade they made uh, Seth Jones to get Boquist, all the first round picks. Considering the fact Seth Jones wanted out, I feel like they got the best return possible. Great job by Kekalainen. Domi there, Jake Bean, medium top four, okay. Texier, Kukin, Gavrikov. I feel like Gavrikov's kind of, you know, a little underrated here. He's a pretty solid defensive defenseman. I would make him, I think, 82 and definitely medium top four. Low top six is kind of like an insult, honestly, to him. Uh, I feel like he's way too underrated there. Uh, rest of Columbus, though, doesn't look too, too bad. Emil Bemstrom, low top six. I'd give him medium top six. Like, he's played up there quite a bit. Um, other than that, though, pretty solid. Dallas Stars, Tyler Sagan, 87. Didn't play at all last year, or he played three games, my mistake. I think 87's fair. Uh, him and Hall, one and two. I'd have them pretty similar rated. Velsky, 86. He had such a good year last year, guys. 51 points, 56 games. Um, honestly... I don't know, Pavelski, he's got really good defensive stats, his hand-eye is insane, 96, good to see them get that right. You could have an 87, I don't think that'd be too far off. Heiskin there in 86, medium lead, very good, young defenseman. Uh, John Klingberg there, Radulov, maybe that's a tad high, probably have him like 84-85. Suter, if he's still in 85, does Minnesota buy him out? I don't think so. So thinking about it that way, i probably have him like 83-84, because still a good defenseman, just not worth, you know, the 7 million he was getting paid. Ben there, that's probably fine. Hence, I think I give high top six to Jason Robertson. They give a big boost, medium elite potential now, and 84 overall. He's probably going to grow a ton for Dallas. Gurianov also medium elite. I don't like that one. I don't think yeah, he's 24 years old. Uh, I mean, maybe they gave medium elite to grow a bit more at the end, but what's he have? 30 points as his career high so far in the NHL. Yeah, I think low elite or medium top six would be better for Gurianov. Also, 84 I think is a bit high. Probably have him 83. Glenn Denning there. Kivaranta there, playoff hero, 25-78, medium top nine. Philandria, 21-77, medium top six. Pretty fair, I think, for their prospects. Now, my favorite team here, the Red Wings. Dylan Larkin, 87, medium elite. I feel like, if we're going to be honest, he didn't have a good last year. Uh, 23 points, 44 games. I think I said it last season, so I'm going to have to say it again this season because last year was even worse than the year before that. Uh, Larkin should not be an 87 at this point. I'd say like an 86, but I would still keep the medium elite because I think, you know, just had a down year. Tyler Bertuzzi there, 85. Higher rate than Jacob Verana. I don't know about that one. I would switch those two. I think Verana, 85. Bertuzzi, 84. Nick Letty, 84. Is a little high. He's a really good, like, puck-moving defenseman. Good on the power play. Uh, defensive stats there, I think, are a little too high. I would give Letty, like, 82, 83. Fabry there. Uh, Bobby Ryan. Zadina still has to be elite. Would love for him to have a big year. Uh, Pai Suter, I think, one of the better free agent signings this summer. Heronic there, medium top four. Could even give him maybe high top four. Like, he's pretty pretty solid on our team. You have to remember, we suck. So if a player looks good on our team, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Nemestikov there. I don't think Sider's on the roster yet. I believe he's still uh, on the AHL team, so I'll check him out later. Avlino, Rasmussen. I noticed Rasmussen, they actually have prime position left wing now, opposed to center. Also, they got his height right. I think they had his height as like 6'4 last year. He's actually 6'6", so good to see that change. Um, overall, like the Red Wing ratings, I think are pretty decent. McDavid here, already mentioned, too low potential. He's also too low rated. He should be like a 97. Drysall though, I think they got right. Uh, Nurse there looks pretty good to me. Low elite, I mean, he's one year left, whatever. 87 overall. Nuge there. Barry's a little bit high, 86. I would say Barry's like an 84, but still really good offensively. Obviously, he led defensemen in scoring. You could just lower his defensive awareness to like 84. And then shot block, stick check, maybe both of those, you know, 85, 86. Keith's also a little bit too high there, 84. That's the reason why everyone felt Everton got fleeced in that trade. I would have Keith no higher than 82. I am curious, um, what is Caleb Jones rating? Um, 80 overall, so he didn't get changes all. Yeah, I think Keith, marginal upgrade on Caleb Jones. That's why it wasn't really worth the pick in the contract. 82 tops. Uh, Zach Kleiman, 84, pretty fair, I think. Medium top nine, though. I mean, come on. Zach Kleiman was playing top six for the Leafs. I don't know about that. Clef bomb low elite because of injuries, but whatever. They also lowered his rating, even though he's out because of injuries. I don't know. I don't think I like that. I don't know. It's tough because like if a guy's not playing, you don't want him to make the team too much better when they're kind of using ha his salary that they don't have. But um, if Clef bomb's healthy, he's better than 82. He's an 84, I think, which is what they had him last year. Blue Yarby there, 23, 82, low elite. Honestly, I think they nailed his rating of potential. Yamato, 82, medium top six. Uh, that's pretty good, I think, too. Fogel there. CC is just an 80. Same with Cassian. Bouchard, 79, medium top four. Overall, yeah, I think these ratings are pretty good for Edmonton as well. 
Um, really no complaints from me. I'm at Cloud 26, low top 6. Might make the team this year if he does. EA is definitely going to boost that rating. Florida Panthers up next. Barkov just got paid. I don't know if you guys saw that, but like $10 million a year, and it's pretty much all salary bonus, so he gets it as soon as the season starts. Uh, him and Hubert Doe, I think they could both be 91s, to be fair. Ekblad looks good. Mackenzie Weger finally getting some love. 85, EM top 4. I think that's a good rating for him. Reinhardt there, don't mind it. Verhage finally got upgraded. Hornqvist, Duclair, Forsling as well. Uh, so Florida there actually got a decent amount of upgrades. And I mean, you play as well as they did, it makes sense. Sam Bennett only an 80. The dude kind of popped off for the Panthers. 32 points, 53 games. I feel like at least 81, maybe 82, honestly, for Sam Bennett. The uh, rest of the guys there look pretty decent. Now next up here with the LA Kings, Kopitar, 90, low franchise. Doughty, 87, low franchise. So this is what I made Doughty last year when I brought his rating down. So I have to say, you know, it's a better rating than before. I would say it's pretty fair. Uh, maybe like an 86, but they got it better than they have in the past. Deneau, Arvidsson, Campe there, Athanasiu. Uh, these look pretty good. Alex Edler still an 82. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, the rest of their defense is low rated because, yeah, it's not really the greatest in real life. Uh, let's see, did they get Trevor Moore? Yeah, finally, 79 overall. He was rated like a 74 forever, even though he was much, much better than that. Byfield is 78 there, medium elite. Um, I'm guessing Turcotte is still in the AHL, so those look pretty good as well. Minnesota Wild here, caps off 88 medium elite after his rookie year, 9 million bucks. Uh, Spurs in there, 86. I think Spurs could be 87. He's a very solid defenseman. Dumbo 85, I think, is good. Same with Erickson Eck. Brodeen there, 84. So here's one thing where I feel like just logic should play a factor when EA's doing their ratings. Brodeen's making 6 million. He's 84. They didn't buy him out. Suter was making 7 something, and he's 85, and they bought him out. You'd think Brodeen's at least as good as Suter. So that's what I mean. Uh, Suter should be max 84. Brodeen, honestly, should be an 85. He's a very good uh, defenseman. Much more defensive than offensive. I feel like he could probably be a defensive defenseman even, opposed to two way. Fiala there, I feel like that's a good rating. A lot of people wanted 85 for him. He did have 42 points, 57 games. Maybe he could go 85. I wouldn't complain, I think, if he was. Greenway there, Foligno, Goligoski. Um, overall, these ratings look pretty good to me. Nothing sticking out is wrong. Boldy there, of course. Uh, just created player. So, yeah, Minnesota's pretty good as well. Montreal here, Jeff Petrie. Pretty big rating upgrade for him now in 87. Uh, he's higher rated than Shea Weber, who, again, he's a guy like Clefbaum. He's not playing at all this year, but... You know, they didn't drop his rating a ton. Plus, he's 36, so he's actually probably going to gain worse at, during his time off. Where Clef Bond is still relatively young. Gallagher there, 85. Suzuki, 85. Medium elite. Okay, so I think last year we were saying how Suzuki should have better potential than Kokinemi. And Suzuki had medium top six. Kokinemi had medium elite. So I think I made Suzuki high top six and Kokinemi low elite. And they did something pretty similar here. I feel like can't probably complain about the medium elite for Suzuki. Defoli there looks good. Hoffman, 84. Maybe a little bit high. I don't know. I'd probably have him like 83. He's pretty one-dimensional. Uh, Dvorak there, of course, the new guy. Jonathan Duran, 83 medium elite. So I think medium elite's a little bit high for Duran at this point. Should be a top six. Um, 83 overall rating, though, is probably fine. Still has, yeah, some wicked offensive stats. Plus, good to see he's a playmaker now, because I believe he was a sniper in the past games. Also listed there as a left winger. 70 face-offs. You'd probably have that like a little higher, because he does play center sometimes. Cole Caulfield here has a headshot now. 83 overall, medium elite. This dude's probably insane. Yeah, look at the shooting, the speed, the hands. All offense. Physical there is terrible, but he's going to be nasty in franchise. Josh Anderson, bit of an upgrade, now in 83. Finally gave him some love to that shot. Good to see. Joel Edmonds in 83, gave an upgrade, probably seeing him playing the playoffs. David Savard, 82. I feel like David Savard's a better defenseman than Edmondson, though, so Savard should be in 83 as well, at least. Sherrod, Kulak, Armia, uh, Romanov, 79, medium top four. Byron, let's check his speed. So last year, I don't remember. It wasn't even a 90, I don't think, though. 88. I don't remember what it was last year. I feel like it was a little lower than that. Maybe it was 86, 87, but uh, it's still off. It should be, you know, a 95, I'd say. Um, other than that, looks like these ratings are pretty good. Next up here, National Predators. Yossi Ekholm, Forsberg, Granlin, Johansson, Duchesne, Fabro dropped from medium elite to medium top four. I'm fine with that. I think that's probably a bit more accurate. Maybe high top four even. Uh, Tolvin and Slow's medium elite. Ah, that's tough. He's a good prospect. I'm fine with it. I think you could leave it at medium elite. I'd usually, I think, make him a high top six. Let's see everything else here. Pretty glass potential's gone down. It was high top six and now low elite. Hasn't really proven much in the NHL so far, so I think that's a good potential drop. Um, everyone else there makes sense, except for Alexander Carrier. 
They actually protected him in the expansion draft, so clearly they value him quite a bit. Uh, his rating and potential here are way too low. He should be like a 78 and a medium top four, so definitely another one I'll have to fix. New Jersey Devils here, Dougie Hamilton, now the best player, got that big contract. His year there, Severson, Smith. Smith, 84. So last year I was saying he was too low rated because he was a 78. And I think he had like the same points as Hughes as a defenseman. But 84 now, 23 points in his rookie season. That seems a little high on Smith for me. I think 82 is probably more accurate. Uh, Tatar, there, 84. It's tough. He's a pretty good player, but he was scratched by Montreal. 83, 84. Hughes, there, 84. I decided it was fine. I saw like it released on socials. I think I'd have Jack Hughes medium elite though, opposed to high elite. Uh, Subban there, 83. It's fine. Zaka there. Shrangovich, 82. Finally gets some love. Low top six. Go medium top six. I think that's fine. Graves rating looks good. Uh, Kukinen, yeah. Pretty similar performance and potential for both him and Shrangovich. So, don't know why they're both not medium top six. Brat and Wood there. Brat should have medium top six as well. Some of these guys are just getting done dirty by EA. Andreas Janssen's an 80. Um, McLeod there, 78 medium top six. He's a guy that always seems to grow in franchise. And you can also get him cheap. Like, he'll be an 86 overall, making two and a half million bucks. You see, that's the same case this year. Jesper Bockfist there, good potential. Nolan Foote. I feel like they made a great trade with Tampa Bay on that Blake Coleman one. Uh, Luke Hughes, of course, I added. Islanders here, Matt Barzell, 89 overall, highly potential. Okay. Yeah, Barzell's high elite. Pashanak needs high elite. Good to see A finally give him some love. Also, they boosted his skating stats there. Polak and Pelic, both 86. Pelic's got a medium top six, though, which is a joke. Again, 27, but. He's 86 overall, he's better than top 6, the potential just doesn't make sense. Lee 85, Bailey Nelson 84s, Bovey 83, I think these are not bad. Uh, Augustuson I added to their team in the player movement, but uh, definitely have to fix his rating, like he's on a PTO, he's not 82, he's like an 80 max with good offensive stats and uh, pretty bad defensive stats. Dobson they drop from high top 4 to medium top 4, I think that's fine. Uh, Charles in 82, which is probably fine. Walsh from there, still high top six. Mayfield's an 81. You could maybe bump him 82 and definitely fix potential. They got Parise there. Um, so yeah, looking at it, I feel like they got the Islanders pretty decent. Definitely better than they've had them in the past. Johnny Boychuk, of course, still on LTIR. Rangers are up next. Aaron leads away, 91 overall. Adam Fox finally has medium league potential. It's kind of embarrassing last year. Medium top four, wins the Norris. Zibanejad, 87. Again, I think he could be like an 88. Definitely boost his shooting. 24 goals last year, 41, 30. Uh, the two years prior, come on. Truba there, 85. That might be a little high for Truba, honestly. He's probably like an 84. Uh, even Strom, I think, is more like an 84. Lafreniere still has high elites. Lindgren there, 82. Kako still has medium. You got Sammy Blyce there. Can't believe they traded Buchnevich for him. Uh, Goudreau, 80 overall, making 3.6. Kind of rough. Miller, Krasov, both 79s. Good potentials. Ryan Reeves there. What's Reeves like fighting and stuff this year? Pretty high. Get the rest of these guys here. They look pretty good. Ottawa Center's up next. Thomas Shabbat there, 88. High lead as well. Interesting. I like Shabbat a lot, but you're going to give him a high lead, and you're not going to give it to Kale McCarr? I don't know. Okay, so yeah, there's definitely you know, a little bit of tweaks we have to do, but overall, these are pretty good. Uh, Kachuk, I like that rating potential. Same with Norris. He definitely deserves that. And Drake Batherson, so good to see those guys. Played first line for Ottawa. Looked pretty good, not too out of place. They definitely deserve that increase to rating. Connor Brown's 84 as well. He had a pretty good season last year. I'm just looking at these Ottawa headshots. They're so bad. I don't know what the photographer was thinking on these ones. Uh, Timmy Stutzla, 84 medium elite already. He had 29 points in 53 games, already an 84. That seems high. So Trevor Zegers is an 82 medium elite. He had 13 points in 24 games. If you just do the math, 13 and 24, 26 and 48. Stutzla had 29 and 53, which is about on par. I think he's a little too high rated already for me, but... Uh, that's okay. Again, I'd prefer them to overrate younger players than older players. But I'm definitely going to drop him a little bit, I think, because he might end up being way too nasty in the franchise. Uh, then you get to, like, the 81s, which kind of sucks for Ottawa. Because, yeah, they do not have a lot of depth on this team. Colin White uh, had a pretty promising future, and then I don't know what happened. Just hasn't looked good the last couple years. Brandstrom, still medium elite. I don't know. He, You could maybe make low elite. He's 22. This is the last year. He's got to prove something for me, or I'm making him low elite, medium top four. Uh, and it's there, I actually added the team in player movement. The rest of these guys, I think, look pretty good. After them, you have the Philadelphia Flyers. Sean Couturier, 89, somehow not elite player. Uh, Giroux, 87. Ellis there, I think, is going to be great on Philly. Running that power play. JVR, Provorov. 
The angle 85 is a little bit too high. He got bought out. He's not getting bought out of his 85 defenseman again. I feel like just got to use some logic there. Uh, I think he does still have very good offensive stats because last year, 26 assists, was still really good on the power play. Um, I would have him like 82, maybe 83. Just keep the offensive stats, lower the defensive ones. Konechny there. Farabee doesn't need to be high top six. He could be medium top six. Hayes, Atkinson, Ristolainen. <laughs> Ristolainen should be low elite and probably like an 82. I know like people like him because he's big and stuff. And I don't want to like rely too much on analytics, but his analytics are absolutely garbage. Sandheim there. Um, look at the rest of these guys. Philly ratings think are pretty good. So Crosby here, 34-93, high franchise, but obviously cannot grow. Malkin there, Latang, Gensel, Brian Rust, Zucker, Kapanen. Kapanen, if you guys didn't realize, one of the fastest players in the game, 93 speed there. Dumoulin, finally in 82. The last two or three years, I kept upgrading him to 82. So they finally did it for me. Same for Marino. He was like an 81, low top six. Terrible potential. They finally fixed that. I don't know why it took them so long. Like These are simple things I feel like can be done in a monthly uh, roster update, which they're doing, but maybe just some guys get forgotten. I don't know. Um, rest of these don't look too, too bad. I'm not going to lie. Some of these Pittsburgh players, I didn't even know were on the Penguins, but I think maybe because of the injuries, they had to call some guys up. Uh, San Jose Sharks here. Hurdle and Couture, the two highest rated players. One thing with Couture I always mention, so his poise is 85. Poise is like the playoff stat. He's one of the leading playoff scorers the last five, six years or something like that. He should have at least 90 poise, I think. Um, Burns and Carlson, both 85s. I mean, they've had down years. That's probably honestly more fair. That's why I said I think Doughty should probably be like an 86. Kane there and Meyer, both 85s. LeBanc, 83. Mario Ferraro finally got a nice upgrade, 82. Last year was like a 78, even though a lot of people say he's one of their better defensemen. Mark Edward Vlasic, 81. Whoa, that might be a little too low for him. I think he was 84 last year. He's a defensive defenseman, so again, he's not putting up points or anything like that. Minus 8 on a terrible team. It's tough. For guys like these, you can't really see much from the stats. you got to watch him play, look at the analytics. I feel like 81 is a little low for Edward Vlasic, though. I think at least 82, because $7 million for the next five years. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know, uh, Sharks fans. Do you think uh, he does deserve the 81 rating there? Gamble, Bolsters, Nieto, all these guys, 79. Or a up here, I think, is a little bit low at 75. Can make him, like, 78. Newest team in the NHL, Seattle Kraken. So, Giordano there, 86 overall. Schwartz, 85. Eberle, Gord, Lars, 84s. I feel like, honestly, Seattle's players are pretty good uh, where they're at. One thing I want to point out, James Schwartz last year, I believe, was a sniper. This year, he's a two-way forward, which is actually a really good player type change from them. He's a really solid uh, two-way winger, so it's good to see EA catch that. Um, again, all this stuff is, like, you know, pretty easily available with um, analytics, watching the game, things like that. So, I can see why they missed some things, but... I feel like a lot of the time, you know, inexcusable the things they do mix. Honestly, I feel like Seattle's got some of the more accurate range potentials of any other team, so that's nice to see. St. Louis Blues, O'Reilly 89, Tarasenko 87. A tough one for me, because he's coming off a bad injury, 14 and 24. The year before that, he's 10 and 10, a point per game, 68. You dropped Tarasenko like an 86. Again, I don't like downgrading guys based on injuries, so. I think 87 is still fine for Tarasenko because he only did play 28 games last year. Let's see how he gets going this season. Which here, 86. Again, I feel like trading St. Blades for him was an absolute steal for St. Louis. Troy Krug there, Shen, Perron, all 86s. Perron had a great last season. You can make him like 87. Similar to Pavelski, they're veterans, but they absolutely went off. They kind of deserve it. Uh, Kyrie also had a pretty good season. Thomas there, saw both 82s. Bozak is back, quite cheap. Um, look at the rest of these guys. I think Oscar Sunkfist. Maybe be like 81, 82. Uh, James Neal, I think, is on a PTO with them right now, so I added him. I think Costin, was it last year, like 43 aggressiveness? Wanted to make sure that wasn't the case again this year. Tampa Bay Lightning up next, kind of like Colorado. I feel like those are the two teams that are going to be the best in franchise. Probably will be in the Stanley Cup final quite a bit. Kucherov, Hedman, both 92. Stammer there, 90, point 89. Could be a 90 as well. McDonough, 86. Search, 85. Flat up to an 85. Let's see him get that upgrade. I don't know why. <laughs> Showing 70 games played. Does that include playoffs, maybe? I'm so confused, but 46 points there in 55 games. Uh, he was playing great on that first line with Point and Stamkos. Shirley, 84, medium top six. I feel like Shirley is such a good two-way player. You can give him high top six. Eric Chernick, finally they gave an upgrade to. He was like 78 overall the last two years, even though he's playing their top four. 83 overall now. I love the fact that they finally fixed that. Uh, so many guys have constantly had to change the last couple seasons. It's good to see I just have less work to do now. The year that there's roster share, of course. Uh, Maple Leafs here. Matthews, 92. Medium franchise. Okay, so it's a big upgrade from high elite. Marner there, 90. Medium elite. 
I will say, if Matthews is medium franchise, Marner should be high elite. I think Marner is, you know, only slightly less potential than Matthews. So, uh, one thing to keep in mind. Now, I'd like to say he got this potential boost because he's on the cover, but honestly, I think Matthews does deserve that. Tavares, 88, low franchise. I think they downgrade him by one. Riley, 87. Nylander, 86, low elite. Nylander can be medium elite. I'm not sure why they're getting him low there. Muzz, 85. Brody, 82. Brody had a solid season. I would give Brody 83, maybe 84. Uh, just a hole there, finally got an upgrade, 82. Nick Ritchie, okay. Travis Dermott, might be a little bit too high, I think. Probably have him, 81, 80, because Hole clearly, I think, was a better defenseman last season. Kerfoot, Kasha, Simmons, Mikhaev. Sand in there, high top four, that's fine. Uh, Michael Bunting, a bunch of Leafs fans think he's going to have like a 50-point season. Not sure about that one. I think uh, the rating there, potential, is pretty good. He didn't really do anything in the NHL to last season with the Coyotes. Uh, rest of the Leafs, honestly, I think I like their potentials and ratings. Elias Peterson here, 88, high elite. I feel like that's fine. Besser, 87. Quinn Hughes, 86. Same with Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson's a little bit high. Uh, he should be 85, if not 84, when I think about, you know, Carlson and Burns rating. JT Miller there. Horvat, Garland. I feel like these are pretty good. Myers, probably like an 82. Dickinson, Pearson, Hollander. Honestly, these aren't too bad. Um, Rathbone, maybe medium top four. Depends how... You know, much you like him, I guess, as a prospect. Your lady still has the medium top four, and I don't know, I feel like Canucks fans are going to be waiting a while for him to become that, you know, everyday top four defenseman. Uh, but Cole's in here, I just want to mention this. A lot of people were saying he's actually 6'4", because I think that's what it shows on Elite Prospects and stuff, but I did my research, and NHL.com has him at 6'1", and I even read a thread where Canucks fans were saying how he's 6'1", because, you know, you see him standing next to other 6'1 dudes, they're the same height, so I'm not sure why there's a conspiracy around this dude's height. Maybe his agent or something made him sound bigger make uh, more money i don't know uh vegas up next mark stone 89 he's underrated he should be a 90 91 he's that good trangelo there patch ready could be 87 he scores so so much one of the better goal scorers in the nhl theodore as well way underrated should be 87 if not 88 i think tom shabbat for instance shabbat they're 88 overall i would have them pretty comparable in terms of how good they are so either shabbat should be an 86 or theodore should be an 88 and i think the answer is theodore should be an 88 uh, Carlson, Smith, Tuck, Martinez, Dadov, 83, maybe 82. He didn't do anything last year. He got traded for nothing. Uh, Shelly Stevenson, I think it's a bit of an upgrade, 82, because, you know, he's played first-line center for them, even though he's not a first-line center. Nicholas Hay gets some love. Nolan Patrick, finally low elite now, post to medium elite, which makes sense. Unfortunately for him, just injuries, other struggles, 9 points in two games last year. Yeah, he cannot still have medium elite potential. So, overall, I feel like a uh, pretty good job here with the Vegas Golden Knights. Washington Capitals up next, Ovechkin there, 92 medium franchise, I already mentioned, 92 might be a bit high for Ovechkin, uh, it's like the defensive stats, he does not have 88 D awareness, um, not, not at all, so I uh, could drop that, uh, even Carlson there, 90, I feel like keep his offensive stats, drop his D awareness a bit, Backstrom, Kuznetsov, Oshie, these look pretty good to me, um, Justin Schultz might be a little high at 84, Mantha, 84 overall, he could be an 85. I think Mantha is very, very good. It's why they gave up Verana and a first round pick to get him. Um, let's see everyone else here. Sprong, 79, medium top six. Usually grows pretty good in franchise. I feel like the Capitals' reigns were pretty good as well. Final NHL team here, the Winnipeg Jets. Shifley, Connor, Wheeler, Morrissey. Morrissey's a little high. Should be like an 84, maybe 85. Ehlers a little low. Uh, should be like an 87, maybe an 88 as well with Connor and uh, Wheeler there. Pionk, 85. Cop, 84. Big upgrade, medium bottom six. Interesting, very interesting potential. It should be like a top nine. Uh, Dubois, 84 medium top six. Dropping Dubois' potential from medium elite. I don't know about that one. He had a down year for sure, but 50 point guy, 60 point guy, 50 point guy. I'd at least have Dubois as a high top six. Schmidt on the team now. Uh, Stastny there. They've also added Dylan. I think Winnipeg's gonna be a really good team this year. Their biggest, obviously, drawback was their defense. They've added guys. Veselainen, no longer medium elite, now low elite. Uh, great to see them make that change and fix it. Logan Stanley, 75, high top six. I think Stanley could be like a 78. He didn't look out of place at all in the NHL last year. So if we guys look out of place in the NHL, deserves like a 78 in my book. Brian Little, of course, now on LTIR as well. So yeah, definitely a better job with the ratings this year by EA, but still um, some work I'm going to have to do. Goalies quickly here. Uh, Gibson, probably like an 88. Stollers is fine. Most of the time, I think the backup will be fine. Arizona, clearly tanking. Hutton and Corner, the two goalies. No complaints for me there. Allmark, Swayman, uh, both look pretty good. Swayman, maybe 82. Anderson and Dell, fine with those. Calgary Flames, Markstrom and Vlader, again, look pretty good. 
um, Anderson, Ranta. Maybe drop them both by one. 86 for Anderson, 83 for Ranta. Chicago, Flurry, and Lankinen. Honestly, not too bad. Uh, Kemper, Fr Frank, who's an 84. I don't think Colorado gives up a first round pick in Connor Timmins for a slightly better goalie in Kemper. Kemper's much better. So, honestly, I think both these guys need to like wind the divide. I would make Kemper an 87 and I would drop Frank, who's an 83. 84 for Frank, who's is uh, insane because I think he started last year as like a 70. He was a, he was a 60. He's like a 68 or something. So, I don't know what makes them think he's that good now. Um, there's Lincoln there, 85. Corpus Allo, 82. So, last year they were both tied 84. Clearly, they think Merz Lincoln's a better goalie. I'd have to agree. Dallas, Bishop, 85. This is another one. He just got dropped because he was injured. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, he didn't play at all last year. The year before that, 0.919 at 2.5. The year before that, he should have won the Vezina. He got robbed. 0.934 save percentage and a 1.98 against. He deserved the Vezina that year. He got nominated. Um, I don't get dropping guys because they're injured. Doesn't make sense to me. Bishop should be like an 87. Uh, Kudobin, 83. Could make him an 84. Hope he's there, 82. I think Ottinger, I'm not sure, we'll have to check, I guess, his rating. Uh, Nodjevic there finally got upgraded. He was 81 last year, now an 84. Grice for 82. Smith in 84, uh, with elite potential, which is just strange. Koskinen, Staylock, they, they look fine to me. Robrovsky, 85, so he has gotten dropped again. Spencer Knight there, 82 overall at 20. I mean, he played four games in the regular season, and he played two games in the playoffs, so six games. I think Shashurkin played, like, 13 games, and they gave him an 87. So, I mean, Knight might be a little low, honestly, because he looked better than Wabrowski. I think he could make Knight like an 84. Uh, the Kings here, Peterson, 84. Quick, 82. So far, these are pretty good. Talbot, Kacken, both 83. I thought, you know, they were pretty similar. Uh, Montreal Canadiens, Carey Price, a lot of people think he's too high rated. In the playoffs, Price is like a 95. In the regular season, like an 85. Split the difference, that's 90. It's pretty close for me. I might have him like 88, 89. Jake Allen, solid backup. Looking at National Next here, Saros is an 85. That is an absolute joke. Uh, he was one of the best goalies in the NHL last year. The sole reason why the Predators made the playoffs. He had a .927 and a 2.28. One overall higher than Frank Hughes. Are you kidding me? Uh, Saros should be like an 87. So they got that one wrong for sure. Blackwood, 86. Blackwood is not better than Saros. Like, are you kidding me? Uh, Bernier, 83. Bernier is a pretty good goalie. He played well in Detroit, who again, they were terrible. So the fact he played well there, I think Blackwood 86 is a bit high for me. I'd have him like an 84, maybe 85. Islanders here, Varlamov 87, I think that's a nice rating. Sorokin here, 83 low starter. I don't know how he got low starter after playing well last year. 0.919 to 2.31. Um, you should have, he's 26, honestly give him medium elite because he does only have one year left to grow and I think if he was over here when he was playing the KHL, he would have had medium potential. Also, I feel like he'd upgrade his rating too, like an 84, 85. This is one of the better goalie tandems in the entire NHL. Rangers here, Shashurkin 87. I think Varlamov's better. Uh, Yorgiev 82. So you know what, if Shashurkin's an 87, maybe leave him and actually upgrade Varlamov to 88. Like, he was so, so good last year. Matt Murray 82. That's a tough one. He didn't play well, but he played for a pretty bad team. Then the team played well at the end of the year, and so did Murray, so. Uh, so far, you know, their success has gone together. 82 is probably fine for him. I might be a little bit nice, bumped him to 83 just because he is on a bad team. Uh, Flyers here, Carter Hart, 83. Obviously coming off the worst scene in his career. I think he'll bounce back, and he's young too, so that's probably a fine rating with the potential. Martin Jones, 81. He could honestly be lower than that. He'd be like an 80. He didn't do well last year. Uh, Jerry DeSmith, both 83s. Probably fine. Uh, they're, you know, playing about the same last year. Sharks here, Ryan where they have as the start, 83. Hill only an 81. Uh, I think Hill could be like an 82 when he does play. He's pretty good. Uh, Grubauer the 87, Drieger 84. Again, I think Seattle, they got pretty close to accurate. A lot of people have said oh, Grubauer only did good last year because the Avalanche were in front of him, and that may be the case, but based on those numbers, like you got to give him an 87. So they can downgrade him during the year if he does do burst on Seattle. Uh, Bayesian here, 85. Who's so 80? So they finally gave him an upgrade. He's like, what, 74, 77 or something uh, for a while now. Uh, Bayesian, I don't think he should be an 85. He should be like an 86. One of the better goalies. In the NHL, Vashilovsky 92, definitely deserves that. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs here, Mrazek 84, Campbell 82. Ah, uh, it's so tough because Campbell got hot last year. The fact Anderson's 87, Campbell's 82, and Campbell like beat him out or whatever. That's what I'm saying. Anderson should be like an 86. I would make Campbell an 84 as well. I think that's kind of the solution. Uh, Demko 86, deserves it. He could even be an 87 maybe. Halak 82, Halak could be like 83. Uh, Leonard 87, could maybe be like an 88 honestly. Uh, Brassois looks fine. Samsonov 84, Vanacek 83. I think this is pretty good because there's a lot of people who think Vanacek might beat out Samsonov. 
for the starting job this year. Probably why they traded their second round pick to get Vanacek back. Finally, Hellebuck on the Jets, 91. Definitely deserves that. Comer 80 backing them up. So uh, next year, guys, we're going to show you some of the top prospects, uh, what their potentials and ratings are like, and my thoughts on them. So starting off here, guys, the Abbotsford Canucks. They don't really have any top prospects, but just wanted to show you the new AHL team in game. Uh, Condor is here. Tyler Benson, low top six. He's probably worthy of a medium top six, even though the Oilers just don't want to give him a chance for some reason. Also, Samorikov here, 22, 72, medium top four. I don't think he had a headshot last year. I'm not even sure he was in the game last year, so he now is, and I feel like, you know, the rating potential makes sense. Now looking at the Belleville Senators, Lassie Thompson here, 73 medium top four. Bernard Docker is already a 79 medium top four. It's a little bit too high for me for five games played, zero points in the NHL. Uh, I'd say he's like a 77 probably with the right potential. Charlotte Checkers here, Dennis Sanko, 21, 78 medium top six. Looks pretty good. Now the Colorado Eagles here, one guy I wanted to point out, Shane Bowers only has medium top nine. I feel like he definitely deserves medium top six. Slider here, 20 years old, 80 overall, medium elite. I think last year was he high top four, I forget, but I'm glad to see them finally, you know, give Slider some respect. He's one of the better defensive prospects, about to not be a prospect, I think, you know, should be making the team this year. Once you guys a little rocket next year. Three guys that are interesting all at the top. Yolanin always had a terrible shot in franchise the past couple seasons. They finally fixed it. He's actually got a really good shot now, and they made him a sniper, so good, go figure. Uh, Paling there should probably have medium top six, and then Sammy Nuku, they give high top four potential to. They must have gave him that, and then like a week later, he got put on waivers. So I think the potential there is a little high. Uh, it should be medium top four max. As a fact, he went to Montreal, means he dropped through a bunch of other teams. So I feel like, yeah, he's probably a bit too high rated. Looking at the Phantoms next here, I want to show you guys Cam York, 20 years old, Saints on overall, medium top four. He's a guy I've been creating the past few years, played for Michigan. I think he won Big Ten Defenseman of the Year last season. Manto Moose, Perfetti, 1975, medium elite. Such a cob there, that kind of hurts to see. Uh, Hanola there, 2077, medium top four. The Ontario Rain here, I have a ton of prospects I want to show you guys. Alex Turcotte, 2078, medium elite. Finally has a headshot, nice to see. Kaliev, Kupari, they look pretty good. Akil Thomas there, Tyler Madden, uh, Akil Clegg, Martin Furk, wanted to show you guys this. 91 slap shot power. I feel like Martin Furk, he's <laughs> pretty sure he set the record for hardest shot ever. He deserves at least a 95. Uh, some of the Bruins' top prospects there. Rochester Americans, Jack Quinn, they made sure to get the rating potential right this year as they butchered it last time. Look at the goals next here. Gruel and Perot, both medium top six. Mahura, medium top four. Gooley is an 80 medium top four in the AHL. Kind of surprising. Merkley, they've actually downgraded now to low elite from medium elite. Honestly, I like that change. Logan Brown, of course, playing for the Thunderbirds there. Um, after that, Texas Stars. So Harley there, 77 medium top four. I want to show you guys Ottinger, 82 medium fringe. I don't get this, like actually make the prospects that are in game good, like he's going to be passed by some computer generated goalie, Andre should have medium if not high starting potential, like he played in the NHL already, looked good, he's a young goalie, medium fringe, like that makes no sense to me. I'd rather have Jake Andre in goal for me five years into franchise mode than some random, you know, created prospect. Clearly something just annoys me a little bit. Uh, Toronto Marley's here, Nick Robertson, low elite potential, interesting, um, I feel like Low elite, I think I'd give him medium top six. I think that just, you know, makes more sense for him. Make sure to add Hosang. Liljurgen finally doesn't have medium elite. No longer can the Leafs just trade him for a King's Ransom uh, when they're going to go for the cup the first year. Um, other than that, though, looks pretty good. Uh, Tucson, Capo Bianco there. They don't really have anybody. Utica Comets also have a new look there, the black and red. I wonder if I missed any other new AHL teams. Pierre-Olivier Joseph, and I think that's it for the AHL. So, you gotta find the CHL and European prospects to show you guys next. So starting off here, guys, the Edmonton Oil Kings. Dylan Gunther, 18 years old, same three overall, medium elite. Josh Williams here, 20 years old. He's never drafted. I don't know why he has medium top six. The rating's fine. You know, he's a good junior player. But at least make it like a low top six or something. Speaking of low top six, Jake Neighbors, first round pick by the St. Louis Blues last year. He's got low top six. The guy went undrafted medium. Again, some logic would be nice when looking at these ratings. Also, Sebastian Costa here, Red Wings first round pick. First goalie taken in the draft, 15th overall, and he's got medium starter potential. Like, again, Sebastian Costa, if I'm the Red Wings in my franchise, I want him to be my goalie seven years down the line, not some medium elite goalie I get in the fourth round in 2023, which I know is going to happen. Like, it is so annoying to see, especially 15th overall pick. Uh, he deserves at least medium elite potential, if not high elite. Like, I don't know why they don't give some of the goalies higher uh, potentials. It makes no sense to me. Um, after that, I want to show you guys Kelowna, Trevor Wong, low top six, no longer medium elite, so uh, finally fixed him. You got Cole Salinger here on the Medicine Hat Tigers, 18, 68, medium top six. Pretty accurate, I'd say. 12th overall pick by Blue Jackets. I'd maybe even make him high top six for how high he was drafted. Just wanted to show you guys uh, Braden Yeager here, 16, 58. Medium elite. I think he's a 2023 draft prospect. Portland Winterhawks new logo. Just want to show you guys that off in game. 
Speaking of 2023, the guy who's supposed to go first overall, Connor Bedard, franchise potential. Thank you, EA. Last year, they gave him a medium elite, and the dude was putting up, what was it, two points a game in the WHL at 15 years old. Um, he probably deserves high franchise, if we're being honest. 72 overall already at 16. I'm really curious to see how good he's going to be in that 2023 draft, which will be in the next episode of my Seattle Crack and franchise. If you want to check it out. He's actually got his headshot in game, which is awesome to see. And if you guys are curious about his stats here, sniper, which is right. Uh, good shot there. Not very good physical. Again, that's accurate. Good skater. Honestly, I think they did like a decent job here. Depending what he gets drafted at, I might boost his rating, but we'll have to wait and see. And lastly here, guys, the Winnipeg Ice. I don't really follow WHL. Can someone who does tell me, are they like the favorites to win it all? Because they look absolutely stacked to me. Matthew Savoy going to go top five. Connor Geeky for sure top ten, maybe top five. Carson Lambos they have from last year. Connor McLean's good. Like, they just seem so, so stacked. So, yeah, there's the rest of the WHL. Uh, moving on to the OHL here, Brant Clark's an 18-year-old, 23 overall medium elite prospect. Again, I think that's pretty good. Flint Firebirds here, Offman's a medium top six. Coley Achonic, 2065, was a second round pick by the Panthers. Should probably be a medium top four. Uh, the guy is supposed to go first overall, 2022, Shane Wright here. Highly potential, so they finally gave him a boost last year's medium elite, plus a big boost to rating, 78 overall. Um, definitely deserve that. They don't show junior stats, but... I think he was like almost a point per game in his 15 year old season. Last year, of course, he didn't have one. So uh, good to see that. Could maybe even make him franchise, honestly, then boost Bedard to high franchise. I think that would just be more fun. And next, you guys with the London Knights, I want to give a quick shout out to Stuart Roloff. He's to be my cousin's neighbor. So I thought that was pretty cool. And actually, later on down the list, I noticed Logan Mayu here. 53 overall, medium 7th D. Of course, 31st pick by the Montreal Canes this year in the first round. I feel like we all know his story, what he's done at this point. And I think EA probably purposefully lowered his rating and potential, so he's not used later on in franchise mode. Do you like what they did here, or would you prefer that they rate him normally, as I don't think I've ever seen a first round prospect rated this low. I'm very curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this one, so let me know in the comments below. Oshawa Generals, the next thing I want to show you, Philip Tomasino now has medium potential, up from medium top six. He was a guy that actually always was a bust in franchise, so that's cool to see for Predators fans. Auto 67s here as well. Marco Rossi, 70 overall, medium top six. I feel like he deserves medium lead, being the ninth overall pick, 2020. Then on the Peterborough Peach, you have Mason McTavish here, 18 years old, 71 overall, high top six. So he's got a lower overall and potential than Dylan Gunther, even though he's the third overall pick. I feel like McTavish should at least be medium lead as well, being taken third overall. After that, nothing really crazy. Just want to show you guys my favorite uh, team, my local team, Winter Spitfires here. Wyatt Johnson there, medium top six, first rounder by the Stars. Will Cooley there, medium top nine. It was a second rounder by the Rangers, but that's probably fine. And then Gene Luke Foodie here below him, 65 overall, medium top nine. What a pick for him. Looks like he just woke up. Uh, he's third round pick by, in 2020 by Colorado, but he's actually playing in the AHL last year, so I don't think he's playing for the Spits this year. He'll probably be on the AHL team. I think, honestly, he should probably have like low top six. Moving on to the queue now, guys. Looking at your queue to me, you got Raphael Lavoie, 69 overall, medium top six. I thought maybe he could have made Edmonton this year, but looking like it'll be next year if he does. Mercer, medium top six. He was medium top nine last year for some reason. A lap here there, of course, a first rounder. So they look pretty good. On Gatineau, Zach Dean here has got medium top six. I'm not sure if he had that last year or not. Halifax, Moosehead. Uh, you got Zach Loharu with medium top six. Same with Barron. So good to see, you know, them actually getting some of these prospects right. Nathan Gauthier here should be a top 15 pick this year. Immediately potential. Look at winning again next year, guys. Vasily Ponomarev still has high top six potential. I'm not sure why. Needs to be medium top six at most. Xavier Borgo there has medium top six. Maverick Bork, though, medium top nine. 30th overall pick, first rounder. He deserves medium top six as well. Then on Valdor here, you got Samuel Poulin and Jacob Pelche, both medium top six. So overall, I feel like the queue's not too bad. Quickly here, guys, I feel like this video is going to be so long. I'll go through some of the top prospects in Sweden. Noel Gundler has a headshot there, medium top six. You look at this team, whose name I cannot pronounce, William Eklund, 73 medium elite with the headshot. Same with Alexander Holtz there, 77 medium elite. Uh, for Lunda, Lucas Raymond, 77 medium elite. Still a sniper though, should be a two-way forward. Simon Edvinson, of course, Detroit Red Wings, the newest player. Um, after that, I think Lulea is probably the next team. Uh, Hannes Omar's there. Fabian Lysel, 69 medium top six. Uh, they got Julius Honka there. Wanted to show you Jesper Wolstead because potential is still so bad. I think last year was medium starter. They got him at low elite, like deserves at least medium elite, if not high elite. Again, a first round goalie, like goalies hardly ever get taken in the first round. And I feel like so many medium league goalies show up later on in franchise. Like, give these guys uh, the high potential. William Walder here, though, uh, on Detroit. 1959, medium top four. I feel like 59 is way too low for him. He's a very solid prospect. Um, even Jonathan Berggren here, 
71 medium top six. He could probably be a little bit higher. I saw he was like breaking some records uh, for the Swedish league for like his age or whatever. I feel like he needs a little bit of a boost for sure. Um, Anton Lundell here, still only a 70. I feel like he could definitely be rated a bit higher. Brad Lambert there, 76, medium elite. Could maybe make him a high elite, honestly. If you do that though, probably make right medium franchise. Uh, Kamel there, medium elite, also supposed to be like a top 15 this year. I don't want to miss anybody. Atu Ratu, low elite now, opposed to high elite. Uh, they finally fixed that one. I feel like that's probably it for the Finnish league. Um, after that, I think like the only thing I definitely noticed was a couple players in the German league who uh, still, like last year, are too low rated. Uh, so I think on Berlin here, Lukas Reichel, medium top 9. First rounder 2020, should be medium top 6. And then on Munich here, John Jason Paterka, low top 9. Was basically a first rounder. He was like the third pick in the second round by Buffalo. Looked really good at the World Juniors. He should be a medium top 6. I don't know why they're doing him so dirty there with the potential. But that is it guys for my ratings review for NHL 22. Again, definitely a much better job than last year. I feel like every year the ratings should be getting better. But obviously still a lot of stuff I would change. So roster sharing cannot come soon enough. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys are not subscribed yet, hit the sub button below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.